It was the many marriages of Henry VIII that cost William Tyndale his life. Before becoming Henry's queen, Catherine of Aragon had been Henry's sister-in-law, which was bound to have led to some awkward family reunions. In any case, Catherine had not provided Henry with a son. Based on an obscure text in Leviticus, Henry became convinced that God would never give him a son through her, and so Henry asked the Pope to revoke his vows to his wife, whom he referred to as that Spanish cow, which is not a highly recommended title for wives. Now, the Pope refused, but not because of the sister-in-law issue or even because of the Spanish cow issue. It was because Catherine was related to the Holy Roman Emperor and the Pope needed his support. Still, Henry VIII got what he wanted, which happens quite often when you're king. King Henry VIII declared himself to be the head of the English church and had his Archbishop Thomas Cranmer repeal his wedding vows. Then he married Anne Boleyn. Chancellor Thomas More rejected this new arrangement, so Henry had him beheaded. The capacity to remove the heads of people you disagree with is yet another of the many perquisites of being the king. And so in the words of one of Henry's jesters, Chancellor Moore became Chancellor no more. So how did all of Henry's marriage problems affect William Tyndale? Well, one of Tyndale's writings had denounced Henry's disposal of Catherine. A friend betrayed Tyndale, and William Tyndale was captured, strangled to death, and burned. Tyndale's last words before being strangled were, Lord, open the king of England's eyes. God answered Tyndale's prayer. In 1538, Henry approved the Matthews Bible, a completed edition of Tyndale's work. The next year, the king placed a great Bible, a revised edition of the Matthews Bible, in every English church. But England's religious conflicts were far from over. When Mary, Henry's daughter by Catherine, took the throne, she swung the English church back toward Roman Catholicism and killed 300 Protestants in the process, earning the name Bloody Mary and the dubious distinction of being the only British monarch ever to have an alcoholic beverage named after her. It was Queen Elizabeth, Henry's daughter by Anne Boleyn, who placed England on the middle route between Catholic and Protestant. She refused the title Supreme Head of the Church, and yet she also rejected the Pope's power. Her revised Book of Common Prayer was neither Protestant nor Catholic, and the doctrinal statement known as the 39 Articles steered a clear path between Roman Catholicism on the one hand and any extreme forms of Protestantism. Today, it is still Queen Elizabeth's middle way that shapes the Church of England, known as the Anglican Church in the British Commonwealth and as the Episcopal Church in much of the rest of the world.